Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another exciting edition of How Do I Do This Anyways? Uh, today, what we're going to be talking about is the difference between a simple extrusion and a sweep. Okay, so two items here, just a simple cylinder that I extruded out, and then a not-so-simple cylinder that is kind of hollowed and bent sideways, like an elbow macaroni. Uh, either way, um, a sweep tool will make a take a single profile and then stretch it along a path as long as the path does not intersect on itself. So a good example of that is a happy handy dandy paperclip. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a paperclip. Now I have this wonderful little drawing here for you. You can follow that along. And those dimensions work if you follow them. I'm going to freehand this. So, I'm going to go ahead and start a new part file. New standard IPT. Okay. So, the first thing I need to do is actually trace the path of my paper clip. So, I've got that nice path, the long path that I'm going to go ahead and make. Um, like I said a moment ago, dimensions are there. I'm just going to go ahead and grab my line tool start out at my origin and I'm going to click upwards eh, about an inch. Then what I want to do is I want to now grab an arc tool. I want to make sure that I have a coincidence constraint over there and I want to come over. I believe I said uh, three eighths of an inch, three slash eight. And that ought to do it. And then you just want to bring it up some. Okay. Now, see how we got that tangent constraint now? You want that tangent constraint everywhere a straight section meets a curve. So now I need my line tool again. And just like a paper clip, I need to come back down beyond it. I think I said 1.5 work before. Cool. So now I need to go ahead, hit escape to drop that tool, grab the arc tool. Again, we want to make sure we have that coincidence constraint. And we want to come back over this way, but we don't want to come all the way to this Y axis. We want to be just shy of it. We don't want our lines to intersect. Okay. Now, if I make this appropriately sized, let me zoom in here. You can see the tangent constraint pop up. I'm going to go ahead and make this the wrong size. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply that tangent constraint here. Okay, that line and that circle should be tangent. Now I'm going to go ahead, grab my line tool again, make sure I have my coincidence constraint, and just go straight on up to make my next little arc. I want to be careful not to grab onto the geometry of the prior circle, that dotted line there. Just click somewhere above that. Hit escape to drop that tool. Grab the arc again. Go over. Make sure you don't go all the way to the line. Make sure you don't accidentally grab onto some geometry that exists. And put your arc up that way. Grabbing my line tool again. Come on down. Let's just go ahead and finish up ish there. All right. Now, I need to make sure that all of my intersections of a curve to a straight line have a tangent constraint on them. So, to make that easier, I'm going to click right here where it says hide all constraints. And then I'm going to go ahead and click that again to say show all constraints. And now all of these dots popped up. I want to make sure that I have my, yeah, have that selected. I want to make sure that tangent constraints are being made. Click and click. Click the arc. Click the line. And now as I go around from start all the way through. Oh, wait. Cool. Make sure all of them have a tangent constraint right next to them. Okay, cool. So now the next thing I need to do is I need to put a point at the end. Okay. So if I go ahead and put it right there, that should be, since I started on the origin, that should place a point on the end of that line. And that's going to be very important because that point is going to be where we have to make a work plane.
We need to make a work plane in order to have a profile. So we want it to be normal to a curve at a point. So that's my point right there. You see how it kind of lights up there? I'm going to click it and it gives me this little preview screen. Okay, if I move my mouse at all, that preview disappears. So I want to click it again to set that work plane. Now I need to click Start 2D Sketch and I want to select that work plane. Now this is where you would make your profile. So you can do a circular profile, that's fine. That's the easiest way. If you're going to do a circular profile, I would do like 0 0.02 or 0 0.03 inches. Way small. You can do a triangular profile, doesn't matter. As long as you're going to keep them from intersecting, it should be fine. Now I'm going to finish that sketch. So I got one sketch that has path, and I have one sketch with the profile, and now I am ready to go ahead and sweep. Okay. What I'm going to be able to do is find a closed profile, which is the only closed profile here is that circle. Now I need to select an edge or curve. That's the only one there. And it's giving me that preview of that. And I can click OK. And now I have a handy dandy paperclip using the sweep tool. Now, uh, fun factoid, it doesn't matter what your profile shape is. I can go ahead and edit my sketch. I can change the size or I can change the shape of it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and grab my polygon tool. And I'm just going to make a seven sided. Not 78. Oh, you weird. Seven sided polygon. Great. Sounds like fun. Click it. Come on. Polygon. Click. Drag. All right, cool. Now I have a seven sided polygon. Done. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish that sketch and now I'm going to edit my feature. And so now I can change my profile here. Now it's that seven sided polygon. Okay. Whatever your profile is, your sweep is going to carry that all along the path that you have established. So go ahead and save this as paperclip underscore your initials and yeah, submit that screenshot. Have a great day.